had the book you brought, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys can all pass this around. Yes. Ashmole. Here we go. Wonderful. There we go. There we go. That was the actual prop that was used on the Really? Yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. Oh, oh wow. Are you able to keep it? Or, well, yeah. I mean, probably not. We probably need it for the next series. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's going to be a next yeah. series. Yeah. Which I keep um, getting spoiled. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, no, you said there was a writer's you know, room. No, we absolutely we have um, been yeah. working with the writers in season two and the second novel. Ah, um, so, great. you know, we're really excited about it all. And um, there's a lot of love out there for the show. So yeah, uh, we want to make sure we're um, thinking everything through and making the most of the time we have. Right, Alex was talking about how um, maybe some changes to the second series to incorporate you know, her and Valerie's character more because they don't appear in the second book. Can you talk at all about what the process is like adapting slightly different from the source material? Sure, I mean, it's a very fine line because ultimately with... Um, with we are making an adaptation so you want to make sure that we're true to the spirit of the book um, and we've spoken with Deb at length who, you know, because Deb knows her audience you know, better than any of us um, but the bottom line is that they are such an amazing couple um, and you just want to spend way more time with them um, so if there is a way to do that authentically that feels real to the novel and, and also because of the really special relationship that Diana has with Sarah and Em it's, it feels like a really important I think you know it's just something we feel we we must explore for the audience as well because it would be so disappointing getting to know yeah. these guys the and there, they do. there are so many amazing characters mm. in the first season and I assume the audience are gonna fall in love with all these incredible characters. And it's funny because in season two we kind of drop out and we don't see a lot of them again. So it would be fantastic to see how we can weave some of the characters into the second season. Yeah, season Who it's knows? gonna be amazing in the second season. Yeah. It's quite, you know, so I don't know if you guys have read the novel yet, yeah. but yeah. of course. Okay. <laughs> so you know it's Elizabethan, it's present, you know, so oh, yeah. there's lots going on there. Well, well Teresa, um, um, what did you find some of the most, cha some challenging parts of, if any, bringing Diana Bishop to life, and some in uh, surprising or inspiring, and did she change you? Ah, beautiful question. Um, one of the most challenging aspects is just, it's quite practical, I guess. It, she she's a roller. I am not a roller. Um, that was just one particular thing that I found challenging, but really rewarding once I got it. Um, I, you know, grew up doing a lot of athletics, and I thought I'd be fantastic when I got in the boat. Um, I didn't realise how unstable a sc single skull is, um, and. I got in and I remember Dan, my coach, was like, kind of move around a bit and then all of a sudden it went boom and he quickly grabbed the boat and he was like, well, you were about to go in. He's like, now you know what it is. And it was interesting because it was such a, an exercise in calming my mind. And as soon as I let fear come in and I was overthinking the process with the oars, uh, it would start wobbling. And I actually found it quite meditative. And it carried me throughout the series because I thought about the way she is one with her boat and how therapeutic that is for her and, um, and it became that for me as well so it was definitely the most challenging aspect of it but I would say by the end of the show it might have been my favorite part of it mm -hmm. More, um, more and more importantly today, we are focusing on strong female characters in TV, so it's wonderful to see Diana Bishop brought to life. What did you love most about her and, you know, her relatable vulnerabilities and, you know, those sort of things? Um, because we all try to be badass all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. Be. So, um, what were you most excited to show on screen to a female audience with this character? Well, I just love females, and I think females can be everything. They can be strong and vulnerable. They don't have to be black and white. It, we are many colors, and we have lots of complexity to us. So I loved that she was brave and brilliant, and she was so determined, yet she had this vulnerability to her, and she was fearful to open up to this whole other side of herself that she's been denying for so long and it just made her feel very human which is funny because she is from this other world she's a witch and I just related to her I thought that it was beautiful that Deb wrote someone who was 
so layered and could be contradictory. She could be brave one moment and then vulnerable the next and fall into, you know, a passionate way of feeling but then stop herself. And um, I, just, I just thought she was just a beautiful, strong character to bring to life on screen. And I kept falling deeper and deeper in love with her. I just think she's incredible. I think the one thing that really impressed uh, with Teresa's performance and the way she's taken the character is just the fact that she does have a great integrity. As, you know, she's badass, but she's also got integrity because she's a historian and she loves her work, she loves her studies, um, and having that integrity with the character is something I don't think you see that much on screen because it's all about the badass element, but it's not always uh, embracing who the character really is deep down. And it was so important to the novels that um, that we actually tackled that, and I think it's something that Teresa's done fantastically well. <laughs> Now we obviously hear a lot, about, and we heard a little bit about it in the panel with you, Teresa, kind of what drew you to this particular project. Um, but I'm curious, as a producer, as someone who came on board to the project, was there something specific that drew you to this particular project? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think for me, the the overall message of the novels and the trilogy, um, you know, being about acceptance, was is such an important message to put out there. And I think on the panel we were talking about the fact that in some ways the discrimination is between the species, it's not about race, it's not about sexuality, and um, that was something that was really important because it's something I don't think we talk enough about as a society. So for me that was the real important aspect that drew me to the trilogy. Yeah. Do you feel like this character taught you anything that you were walking away like um, yeah, I think my favourite part of her is when she, she she has such an arc throughout season one um, and when she sort of lets go and just embraces all the beautiful parts of who she is, um, she's really leaning into her authentic self and I think whenever in my own life I get a little stuck, I always remind myself just do as Diana does, lean into your authentic version of yourself, into your truth, because it will always serve you. If you always fall back on your truth, it will serve you. And I think just delving into a character who, she has nothing but that, like as you get further along in the series. It was so, what a gift to have. And um, so she taught me that, I think. Lachlan, how, um, tell us about the process of, before you even get to the scripts and before you get to, or as you go to the casting, etc., going from book to all the scripts. So where does the number of eight episodes come from? And then once you get that number, how do you even start breaking down such a book into where to break it? what to maybe leave out or change or adapt, etc. I guess work with the best people in, in one, one respect because you know, Jane Tranter who runs Bad Wolf, um, you know, she has just got the most incredible instinct for story um, and very quickly we arrived at eight episodes um, and Kate Brook uh, who was our lead writer of the show, he, she came on board um, and then started breaking down you know, what the key story beats that we would hit in each episode. Uh, and then we bring on the writing team, um, and at the same time, you know, every, you know, Jane's always across the, the creative process with the story. So in some, but it's all it's a bit yin and yang as well because I think it's important that um, in terms of the timeline, you're generally still developing the scripts. Even you know, once the series has been commissioned, you'll have a map of where you want to take it, um, but you want to work it through to the nth degree. Um, so it's all quite an organic process. Thank you. So this is more of a fun question. Um, now obviously we know that Diana is a witch in the, in the story, but you know I think having had a chance to learn all of the mythology and the history behind and then all the different creatures, um, you personally, I mean this question is for both of you, which group would you have chosen to be? Witch. As in witch, vampire, or demon? You, we, we, we said you're a demon before. Oh, no, wait. He's demon. Um, he has one star here. So, there you go. Um, I think which, just obviously because it's what I know and it's what I've been living as this character, I don't. Um, I, I love the journey that Matthew goes on, but I don't relate to it as much as I relate to Diana. So for me, I think it's a no-brainer. I would choose which. I love her powers. I love just that whole world. Um, 
Demons are an interesting kind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing is, mad. Yeah, and... it sounds a bit of a cop out to say yeah. principles, but I guess if, you know, I'm fascinated by demons because they are. Um, you know, the people who are on the fringes of society, they're the cleverest people out there, whether they be investment bankers or artists, they're the real creative types within our, uh, within our world. But it is a very fine line because um, you, know, you have the rock stars, but you also have the serial killers. So just knowing where you fit into that. So, yeah, <laughs> where do you fit into that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we recently yeah. interviewed um, at Pure Fandom uh, Alice Chong, who yes. oh, yeah. is really, um, for our Fierce Female series. And she was talking about how we asked her, you know, what was it? Was it very important for you as a woman to really showcase, you know, the strengths of female character and all those sorts of things? And that into the special effects and like how do we show that with your powers yeah. so um was it more you dove into a little bit in the panel but was it a lit did you find it more mechanical filming those special effects scenes or was it really fun yeah. um but because we use a lot of practical effects so i was on a lot of wires so um for any of the stuff where i needed to be off the ground so i'll try not to give anything away um <laughs> I was doing wire work, which is really fun. We had some green screen stuff. It is technical, so you do have to hit certain beats in certain places because of where the camera is located. And also, if we were using any CGI, there was always a, you know, the CGI expert there to say, look, you can go here, but not here. You can have this kind of movement, but not this kind of movement. So sometimes it was a little bit more mechanical, but mostly it was just fun. But I think, I mean, I think um, it was a bit more organic. You know, certainly from what I'm watching when I'm watching Rushes, it was a bit more organic than that because I think with with any scene, there's always a shape to it, um, and it's the same with the effects. It's just the rules are slightly different. Um, so I do think that you, there is a technical side to it, but you're always trying to ground it in authenticity, um, and because of the way we focused on trying to do, you know, as Trace was saying about doing as much of it practically rather than relying on VFX, it meant that it felt grounded and part of our world, um, which is a yeah, yeah, you could still be immersed in your character yeah. whilst being on a rig or whilst having to hit a certain mark. Um, and I think uh, our crew and just the passion of the actors uh, really help create that environment where you can stay in character. Even though there may be huge set pieces and things going around you, you really just sort of immerse yourself in the world and then you stay in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.